Hi YouTube, this is Felicia with Bible Scraps and welcome to my second video in my Stamp and Share series. Now this series is all about me sharing stamped images with some of you. You only need leave a comment. I'm also sharing cards and hopefully a technique from time to time. Now in my first video, which I will have linked in my description box, I shared this cute card uh -huh, for Easter or for spring rather. And um, I also shared a technique on how to make do-it-yourself masking paper. Now in this video, I have an even better do-it-yourself method for stamping paper. And I also have the cutest cards. Check this out. Now I wanted to create different from what I'm used to seeing and making. So I came up with the idea of mask card toppers. Ever since I taught myself how to mask, I have been masking away. Now what makes this type of card different? Well, your mask topper becomes your focal point of your card or project. And this card really isn't the best example to share because I added dimensional elements, the balloons and the birthday wishes. Actual card topper is this cabinet here. I have masked off certain areas to add the presents and add a border of desserts. Now, some of you may recognize that image that comes from one of the UK magazines. I'm gonna share everything I used later in the video. But I love how this card turned out. You can do so much with a mask topper. Now this second card isn't finished yet, but this one gives you a better idea. This whole element is one. I've added my balloons. The blender, so super duper cute, right? The ice cube tray. I've added all that, including all the items needed to make a smoothie. I added all that via masking. Love how it turned out. Check out the present in the oven. And let me go back to my smoothie. <laughs> I gave you a sneak peek on what's in the inside. Uh-huh. I have strawberries, bananas, and oranges in my blender. <laughs> but I am loving the whole concept of this type of card. I have some mask toppers to share just to give you an idea of how it looks before you add it to your card base. Here's one using that cabinet. Now if you have the right image, like I love this stove, I love this cabinet, you can turn those into many different occasions and themes. For this one, I've added more presents via masking, but I added a present on top. You know, and I could have kept going higher and higher. I could have added balloons to this one, but I didn't. So you can make it as simple or as elaborate as you like. This next one, I don't care for the colors. I didn't do a lot of masking. Oh, by the way, in this video, I have a simple technique to share with you guys. I'm so happy about it <laughs> because it solved my problem. And I'll talk about that during the tutorial. Now, this card topper is my favorite. Check it out. I love the colors. I use the Tim Holtz oxide ink. But you see how I've added my balloons. Look at the orientation of that one. And I added another present design. And you know, I still have more room to keep on adding different elements to this stove. Alrighty, I used one of my favorite stamps of all time. Check out this beautiful vintage stove. Now I picked this up on eBay a couple of years ago. It is rare and hard to find. I have not seen this stamp since. It was made in 2000 by Stamp Purry. You know, it's hard to see the word, but I absolutely love it. And you can imagine how I felt when I walked in my craft room and saw this beautiful stamp in the mouth of my dog. Thank the Lord that I got to her in time because she would have massacred <laughs> this beautiful stamp. The next one I used is this one. And you know, I'm not sure if I shared this in my um, vintage craft lot. 
I shared in February, but this one was made in 1997. And you can find this one on eBay, though it's not always on the wood block. And then I used the So Smooth set by Lawn Fawn. And then I used designs from my favorite UK magazine to date. I shared a video of all of these images stamped out. I'll have the link in my description box. I used these images here. What I love about these border images, they sit nicely on whatever type of image that you have that's flat. Here you see the flowers, and this one isn't finished, but I have the candy jars. So this is the do-it-yourself method I am most happy about. I'm using very thin paper. I picked up this paper from Daiso. You could use copier paper, um, tracing paper, anything that's thin. Now this technique is different from my first technique using vinyl. And you're going to see why I need a thin masking paper for this technique. But stamp out your images. I stamped out some twice just in case I made any mistakes with my um, first image. And then cut it out. Now, what works best for me is to cut it out right at the line. Even if you cut the line off, it's not going to make a big difference. You don't want to have your lines too thick. Now, once you have cut out all of your images, this is the secret thing that I use. Ah! It's craft uh, Elmer glue stick repositionable. <laughs> this stuff is great, you guys. It's going to add a repositionable sticky on the back of my mask. Now, the key is you have to let it sit at least one to two minutes before you use it. If you don't do that, it will become permanent. After you have added all of your mask to your designs, 
And you see here, I'm using the sticky notes. Now sticky notes is great when you're, when you have straight lines like I have. It's cheap, really easy. And you know what? I know a lot of crafters use sticky notes for mask. Well, once the sticky wear off the sticky note, just use that glue stick to re-sticky it. So I have, um, I need to get that spot there. So I'm going to stamp that area. Now, once I remove my mask, you are going to see a perfect background. If I had a used a thicker mask, like with my vinyl technique, when I add the cardstock to the top, that would have been too thick for this technique. Because my masking paper is really thin, I'm able to get total coverage in the background. And that's exactly what I was going for. Alrighty, a up close look at my finished mask card topper. I do like how this turned out. At first, I wasn't really feeling the colors, but I like how this came together. Um, just a couple notes. This oven door. My special tip is to add vellum when you want to give the appearance that something is on the inside. Without the vellum, my stamped image looked as if it was stamped on the door, but when I added that vellum just in that area, it gave it the appearance that the present is actually inside the oven. I love that. <laughs> Another tip is when you're working with white cardstock and you have a lot of white space and you don't necessarily want that white space, but you still want a soft background, use a light pencil to color in that white space just to soften it up and provide balance. I'm not sure if you can see my stove, but it's not white, though it's still light. I used a white color pencil for this background. And once again, you probably can't see it, but to the eye, it makes a big difference. Alrighty, what else? Well, I use this pearl pen to add my chocolate icing, and I'm gonna use my brother's scan and cut to cut out my topper, but you could fussy cut this out. The images are bold and simple, so that wouldn't be difficult at all. I wanna thank you all for watching. If you have been inspired by my creativity, go ahead, like this video. Also, subscribe if you are interested in more techniques and tutorials. Feel free to share this video. Feel free to leave me a comment and feel free to adopt any of my ideas. I only ask that you link back to this video. Once again, I want to thank you all for watching. And as always, blessings.